Welcome back to the Conscious Day Trader. As you can see, we have a bit of a different background today, and uh, that is quite different than the studio we have in Italy. We are we have landed in Changu, 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 Bali, and uh, we're super excited. We have moved indefinitely uh, with us, with my son and my wife, and this has been a, a, a goal for us for the last two years to be able to create work online and to have the freedom to to be in a sunny country with beautiful people um, and it's happened we're here it's real and it's a bit surreal in terms of um, uh, you know if I show you the views and if you're on Instagram the conscious dot day trader you can see a bit of the life behind the scenes around not just the trading that we're going to analyze today especially the trade from yesterday on the pound dollar but you're going to see a little bit of uh, what life is like uh, living in Changu. And I, I want this to be a message for all the people that are actually trying to make it work. It is possible. And yes, we've done it and we're doing it with a five month year old uh, baby. If you put your mindset towards something and you work hard towards it, it, you can achieve it. Here we are. That being said, what we're going to do today is we're going to break down. As you know, I'm an ICT student. Uh, of the 2022 mentorship uh, free online on YouTube you can go and check it out and you can uh, and you can learn how to trade the ICT concept which is break of structure fair value gaps and all the good stuff that ICT shares his knowledge um, in those 42 I believe the videos uh, and it's great stuff so make sure you go and check that out if you because you won't understand a lot of the things I will be talking about if you're not familiar with ICT trading I also recommend watching the Scruffy Trader because a lot of my management of the trades are not from ICT and it's something that he calls Scruffy Madness and I've changed it to fit to my style and my psychology. So these are the two people that I would definitely recommend going and checking out. Now, um, why did I trade the pound dollar? And I was long, um, even though the move was uh, actually the bias in the afternoon was short in the morning. Uh, it was long. A good thing to um, understand, you don't have to get your bias every day. If your morning bias and your um, afternoon bias be correct every single day, that's impossible. Uh, it's hard to predict. We do our best to make a prediction in terms of um, where do we think is most likely that the price is going to draw to liquidity, but you can't be perfect and you can't um, get it right all the time. The th key thing is that you can manage though every single day your trade. If you've got in early, don't go in full position and then you can manage out of it. If you are actually can see confirmation that your bias is right, then you can size up a little bit and make sure keep your pip count uh, not too high. So then you don't when the swing changes and the bias changes, the change of character, as ICT will say, you don't have to sit in that heat because you already traded in the morning and you're out. And that's what you're going to see today. So we're going to go on to my share screen and we're going to jump straight on to the MT5 and the results. This is the bootcamp, 150,000. As you can see, this is a funded account from the Fivers. And um, I did the originally did the 100 percent, the 100,000 uh, bootcamp challenge, which is three challenges. Then I got my first funded account of 100K and I've built that. I've passed the milestones to 25 and then they increased the account. So now we're sitting at 161 um, because I haven't taken any profits out, which I will do very soon. So what you're going to see is the results from today, which is $403. Um, and what we're going to do also is jump onto my calendar, which it's trade sync. A lot of people start asking about this. I do like it because I'm lazy. Is it expensive? Yes. Would I recommend it? You can do most of the stuff that it does here on Excel. Um, but if you want something easy where you press one button and upload your trades, then and you're like me, then this is something that I would definitely recommend. Uh, I, in the link, I can give you a 40% discount. I, sometimes they do 60%, so check it out. Someone else might have a better like affiliate link. Um, so you can click on that and do a trial and see if you like it. Anyway, that's from TradeSync because I got a lot of messages on that. Now let's jump on to the stuff that we like. Trading, day trading. So today we're going to talk about the pound dollar. Uh, if you're new to this, 
you're going to see that we're going to start analyzing the index, the dollar index. And why do I analyze the dollar index? I look at three pairs. Well, two pairs and the dollar index, so three assets. The dollar index would give me confirmation about what the pair is doing. If I see a strong dollar, that means I want to be shorting the pound or the euro. If I see a weak dollar, I want to be buying the pound and the euro. And these on the market, on the watch list, I have these three things here. Um, so we're going to start with the dollar. And as you can see, I've marked it all up. We're going to take the replay out and we're going to go back. We're on the daily. So we need to take out uh, the 16th and we're going to do, I'm going to show you how we create bias. For you who have followed me, this is good repetition um, because the more you do it, the more you can start building the concept. So before I put the daily in, I started looking at this move and this move is the biggest move since um, Friday the 6th of January. So I'll drag a Fibonacci level on that. And you can see how the price has come back, tapped into the golden zone, which is the 50 to the 61, had a bit of push down, rejected the 38.2, and now it's consolidating between that golden zone. Now, two things can happen to the market. This can either break to the downside to, to chase these sell side liquidity, that green box, or on the top side, which is going to take the highs of this if we're going to continue higher. What can we see? So now we've got a bigger picture of Fibonacci. In the ICT, uh, you would see a bit of a different Fibonacci, and this is what uh, he, he will do the standard deviations. So how many standard deviations is the market possibly going to move. I like a rec recreational Fibonacci um, and I look at that retracement, also some extensions sometimes. But for today, we're not going to look at that. <clears throat> we're just going to jump on the fair value gaps from the higher time phrase. Can you see any fair value gap here? So even though we're here, we're, we're analyzing the biggest move that we can see, which was from this high here all the way down here. And you might the gray area will give it away. And this is the daily fair value gap. We had a gap from that. The, let's zoom in a little bit from that bottom of the wick there to that top of the wick. Let's make it a little bit more accurate. And um, that price came and filled that fair value gap. We also if we go down now the frames and time frames, we'll see on the four hour we had a four fair value gap here and a four fair value gap. The last one here. So why did I put these in? One, because we're going to look at this here. And uh, just to jump on the daily again to show you how I put the previous daily high. Previous daily high will be the top, the highest price that it went yesterday. So Wednesday, because the, the trading was on Thursday. And then I use the magnet and take the price onto the bottom. So that would be the previous daily low. So that was the daily and in the, in the middle, I drag a Fibonacci level from the green to the red. Nothing to do with Fibonacci. I just want to see where the 50% between the red and green is and I'll add that as equilibrium. Okay. And that's set. So we know the high and the low of the previous day. What is that going to give us? It's going to give us where the price is currently from the is it trading from the previous day. Is it discounted or is it in a premium zone? If it's in a premium zone, it will be above the equilibrium, if it's in a discounted zone, it will be below. Um, and what does that mean? It just gives you extra confirmation. If it aligns with your bias from the higher time frames, you want to be buying as the price is discounted close to the previous daily lows, because we know that the market will go and seek those previous daily lows and highs. Okay, so that's on the daily highs and lows. We've put in our fair value gaps on the four hour. Now we want to start painting the picture. Let's jump on to the one hour. As you can see, what we're going to do is this is a Wednesday. So this is the information from Wednesday. We're going to go on the 15 minute. This is a funny part now. When I first came to you, Bali, which was a few days ago, I got confused with the time zone. And yes, I was having a bit too much fun swimming in that pool there with my son. So I missed the London Open. Um, if I had opened the charts, I would have seen it because the market, which I'm going to show you now, would tell me when it starts, but I missed it. So I was an hour late into the trading session. And um, so what we're going to do is going to actually put it at the time that I was looking at the market, which was uh, around uh, nine o'clock. So we have seen, we're, we're currently looking at the price being at equilibrium. Okay. 
So everything here is on the dollar index. Why will I be trading the dollar index? As you can see, we have put the daily high and the daily low, and this would give us the arena from the previous day. So what will you normally do with ICT? You're going to 15 minute, and that you, you take a line, which I don't do it because I visually see it, and you would run it through and see what's the intermediate low on the 15 minutes. So this low here with this high here. If it breaks below here, we would be going down. If it goes below high, we're going up. I don't trade that so much, but it's good to keep an understanding. Um, do you see an ICT uh, a break of structure and continuation of move on this move here? Yes, we have this move, that swing low here. The, break, the price came and created an equal low, came back up, filled that fair value gap there and broke lower. Came back up, gapped up in the Tokyo session and continued down to fill this fair value gaps here. Came back up, filled this side of fair value gaps on the 15 minute and then it broke lower. And this is key, this is what we're looking at. Okay, so we had sell side liquidity break of structure below here. What does that mean? I was looking for a continuation of the dollar index to the downside. Why? Because there's a draw to the previous daily low and these lows here. If we add that line in there as a target, because the price is selling heavily and we can see that since last London session and now it's coming down. So if the dollar is weak, what does that mean for the pound? The pound is going to be strong. Now we're going to jump on the pound and we're going to see, can we see a setup? Let's go on the replay and we're going to go back on Thursday at unfortunately nine o'clock. As you can see, we would have had a, a little bit of a set there, 45 pits since the open. I think that would have been the better trade, um, but I was still confident that this price is going to be uh, continuing on the long side. Uh, why? Because we came back from the previous daily lows, it built up through Tokyo, came back down, filled fair value gap on the Tokyo right here. And then if we extend this, you see that, and we're going to change that into a 15 minute fair value gap right there. So we can see it came up, touched the 50% of the retracement that we were talking about and now had a reaction. So I wanted to get involved. And this is where I got in. So this entry here, price came up. This would have been the best entry here, but I could see I wanted to get into this move. So I had another fair value gap right here. So I got into that area. I got in with a top position on the top of this fair value gap and a bottom position on the bottom fair value gap. So I had two positions. Okay, so let's jump onto the MT5 because I want to show you. These are the levels that we got in. One, two, four, nine, five. And our worst position was one, two, zero, five, four, six. So let's see what that looks like on the graph. So this was my first position and these were my uh, second and third positions. So what we did, we can see the price broke higher, break of structure on the upper side and pushed up all the way to the top. I am not in yet because this is 816. So I missed that move and I was waiting for the price to come down and fill a fair value gap. You had a fair value gap there, I could fill. However, I thought that was a bit high. I was waiting for a better price. I wanted the price to come down and boom, we had my first fill, my second fill and third fill. So you might think that that's a three lot size. However, if this price doesn't come and retest this, this is how I don't, don't go in detail of my management because it's very personal to me, but I'll give you something so you can understand a little bit around how I don't use tight stops. I have a fixed $2,000 loss, which would be if, if two to two thousand and a half. Um, and if you look at my trading, that would be roughly a week's uh, salary. So I am willing, um, well, it's, it's on these weeks here. So 2000 to 2,500 would be a very bad trade. As you can see, we're running all green and our month is on 4,157 after commissions. So 
I would have to, uh, I can take a bit of heat on this account and uh, that's why I can have uh, uh, my stops. I don't, I don't have tight stops because I want to see, I don't want to be the person who's sitting at that liquidity level, which I'm trying to uh, take money from. And this is trading, guys. Someone's going to be losing money and someone's going to be making money. And you want to be on the side that is making money. And if you can, at, at this moment of time, even with these trade three lots, why was I confident? Because we had just filled this fair value gap here. Let's change that to there. And we had a push down failing to break these lows. So what's that telling me? That this is, we had a strong break of structure above and now going higher. We had the setup from the dollar index. So we know that. And then we see the price consolidating came up here. What do I do here? Do I keep these three lots? No. That trade now is closed. Gone. Now my exposure is less. And off it went. So I, I took out this position, right? So this position is now gone. However, if we look at what the price did, the price went all the way up there and would have given me from the position here a good 20 odd pips. 20 odd pips is, um, so I trade on 10 pip, uh, so one lot size. 20 pips will be $200, that's $400, that'll be $600 on these three positions. Why did I make only $400? Because I killed that position. And why would I kill that position? Because I like having at this moment of time, two lots is something that I can manage. So if this price had failed to give me anything above $400, and I sat in heat, I could definitely manage these two positions, but three lots would have stressed my account. And that's how I manage my trade. I don't go in tight like this and have sort of three pips. And if you do that, that's fine because that's what ICT does. I am not ICT. I can't, I can't sniper proof my entries like ICT does. I don't know so much about order blocks. I don't know about breakers. He has so many. I think he said on the interview the other day that he's got 80, 108 or 80 ways of understanding the market. And I only have this one. So I, I can't be picky with my stop. I need to let it breathe. Yes, I understand how, what the market wants to do and where we are in the market, but I am not that accurate in terms of my sniper entries. Okay, it's not too bad. As you can see, we, my, I had to sit in a bit of heat, four pips. So technically, if I had put a tight stop there, I would have been fine. Um, why don't you do that, you would say? Because even if it comes down, and this is the trade, by the way, this is where I got out, so I made my $403. Now, let's say I hadn't made that and it came a bit less high. Look what happens next. The price came and break the lows, okay? So this is another different scenario that would happen, okay? So if you're, if you're seeing that from a short side, you can see we had this move, didn't break the lows. However, I created a swing intermediate low, filled this fair value gap, and now it broke lower. So these are indications, if your bias I'm saying is short, because I was long. Now, even if it went back down and I entered before uh, under these, uh, this, this position here with my third position that I killed here, because now I've, I've, I've decreased some risk. Let's say I entered back in here. And why would I enter here? Because I'm anticipating a fail to break this low. Now, if it didn't break the low and this came all the way up, this position alone would have given me 20 pips. I would have killed that position when it came here and this position would have given me another 10 pips. So I would have come out with roughly $300, even from a bad entry. And that's why I don't like tight short, uh, short stops. So now what would have happened here? It would have gone all the way up if I wanted to hold it. So let's see, actually, that would have been even better. 
if I wanted to hold it because that would have been my 30 and my $500 and more would have been um, uh, in the market. So it came down and then we had the news in the afternoon at 1.30. You can see that because of that flag there, the USA flag. And this is where it break lower. So if, here again, if you're here, would have killed this position because of the profits. And if I wanted to let it run, I would just have the one position. So what happened to the news? Pushed up, looks like a break of structure here, takes out, but look at that wick. What is that telling you from ICT world? What are we gonna see this as? Break to the upper side. What is it taking out? Buy side liquidity. So what is it most, buy side liquidity. So what is it most likely gonna do? Fill this fair value gap, crush it out. And that's the news. That's why I don't trade the news because this, yes, could potentially push all the way high. But as you can see, the algorithm came up, took out liquidity, everyone that was saw that as long and then pushed it down. Now, in terms of a one position, that for me would have been $300. I can still manage this with one position. Now, my original entry, if I'd still not managed the trade and I kept my original entries from back here, that would have been 50 pips. Now we're talking into the thousands. And that's why I manage my trade and kill positions because I want to have a minimum risk, go, definitely going into the news if I'm not paid. But also, I want to be in a position where I can manage the trade here. What's it taken out? Sell side liquidity below here. So I would potentially be entering um, at this sell side liquidity to go long still because my bias was long. Okay, so now if we take from this level to this entry here, let's say, the price only had to come back to 50% to give me, what is it, break even. So I would be at zero here. But if I had kept my three lot positions, and that's where people don't get confused, and they see 10 trades from the conscious day trade, and they're like, his risk is too high. My risk is a lot smaller than a lot of traders because I kill positions, re-enter, get a better price. I'm managing the trade live. I don't just enter and hope that my trading is going to work out. I don't, I don't expect the market to pay me. I need to find ways and understand the market um, as much as I can in terms of price action, time, where we are, are we in the New York session, what's coming up. These are things that you start thinking about. We had news and so on. So that would have come back down. And as you can see, it came before the low and then came back up. Now you see this as quite a scary trade, right? Because my position is here. My break even is here. My second entry is here. Let's say hypothetical entry because I showed you the entry earlier. So let's take this scenario. So the price comes down and it doesn't come high enough until here to sort of break even and kill the trade if I want. What is this position here? I would have had to sit here into, let's take the measuring tool, 30 pips. Okay, so that would have been now, uh, what's that? So $300 plus, mm, let's take that one and go up to this position. The worst case scenario, uh, 60. So this has broken the low, right? What do we know when it's a broken low low? And the time is crucial. We had the London kill zone. So this now is quite sketchy, why? Because this could potentially be the high of the session and we traded it long but the sentiment changed and you could see that. That's why the hypothetical, I would never be in this position, but I want to show you how I manage a bad trade. Where would I have killed the trade? Because now we're discounted and this would have come up and gone back to break even and I would be okay. Like I said, I risk around $2,000. $2,000 for me from this position here, this would have been 60 pips, so that is uh, 600 
dollars that would have been seven hundred and eighty dollars plus the uh, 20 so we're talking about a grand and I can sit in that that heat because I have a hundred sixty thousand account and the drawdown is uh, I can't remember how many 15 to 20 thousand uh, drawdowns so I've got I've got some room to play and as you can see the price came back to break even so I would have had options here because at this break here and this break high I would have probably entered another position here why there what do we have here we have this break above buy side liquidity this break above this buy side liquidity let's take this out of the way now what's happened break of structure fills this fair value gap I could have this entry here my third lot position if it comes here what do I do I've killed now let's take this so I've got one position here one position here which position do I not like this one can I kill it no it's quite far away right so what do I do let's take this away so what do I do how do I manage this position here do I use these three lots here potentially because I've broken a structure change of sentiment the news have happened let's see if it doesn't break the lows this is going to go higher and higher and higher and this is how you manage a trade okay without the tight stop losses as you can see it comes back down breaks the lows now we're on uh, late in the uh, nine o'clock UK time and then it hovers around the uh, previous daily low so what does this tell you I would have had this position and this position with this pip count here 25 pips which is as we know $250 250 that's $500 minus this position 12 pips I would have still made 400 and something dollars and this from getting a bias wrong you see how many opportunities you can trade and get out of bad trades and that's why you see my green days it's because even if I get in here I can still get paid you might see this how the hell has he managed to get out of a 70 so seven hundred and forty dollar um, drawdown is because I've purposely kept my lot sizes for the account again if you have a 2000 account obviously you can't do this if you have a million account then you can do a lot higher lot size and it's all retrospect to what your account size is so we've done I, I've shown you a bit of a detail around how my brain thinks around managing um, trades I hope you uh, I hope you understand a little bit, bit more about why how I manage risk okay this is not ICT this is not scruffy madness and um, for the scruffy traders this is something that I'm developing and it works for me will it work for you most certainly not and this is why you have to think take information from ICT take information from um, scruffy trader whoever whoever you follow as mentors and you follow the trading even from me take stuff that I'm telling you but don't try and copy it you have to make it your own because I am not you and you are not me okay and um, there you have it okay after that long discussion around risk management and the trade that we did with the pound dollar for 403 let's bring back the good views and relax for a bit and again I'm going to stress it one more time this is not unachievable and you can do it and everyone who's stuck in positions where they think that life has to be a certain way we take you can change those rules and yes we're, no, we're not all in the same circumstance and it's stressful and you might have to um, spend a lot of time thinking of how you can get out of a nine-to-five job what how can trading help you because trading has done that for me and obviously my my wife has got an online business that she has also supported this career and that's another key thing that you you need help and people to help you around when you're doing something out of the norm and if you think risky 
Um, but what, what's, what's in life without risk? You need to take risk. And risk comes with a reward, but risk, you have to, like a trade, you have to manage your risk, your life risk, in terms of uh, how do you scale out of a nine to five job, create relative revenues that comes in, and uh, put yourself in a position where you can come to a place like this and live the life that you really want. I hope this has been helpful. Um, you haven't seen the outros. Uh, this would be like this. And uh, uh, I think this, back, let me know in the comments if you like this, obviously it promotes the conscious day trader and the trading mindset, which will start very soon. Now we're settling in into Bali, interviewing uh, the best in the field and seeing how the mentality works. Um, but I think keep it with this view. Uh, it would be rude not to, to provide you a bit of water behind and the Bali vibes. So until, uh, as you can see, we're going to be trading. I'm going to be showing you a, a tr the trade that happened yesterday. So we're going to be one day behind. Um, just so if, in case you're seeing the price and you're like, that doesn't look like my charts right now. Um, just because when I'm trading, I might be trading till late in the afternoon. Doing a video uh, will take me 10, 11 o'clock at night. I can't, it's not sustainable when you want to put the, the kids to bed, the kid. So there you have it. I'll catch you next time and that will be today, uh, but it's going to be uploaded tomorrow. So have a good one and see you soon. Oh,